three, two. On today's show, the Dallas Mavericks get a win. Was it kind of a loss, though? We'll talk about that. And then no Kyle Kuzma trade coming. Are the Wizards going to hold their cards close to the chest? We'll talk about that and more on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Oh, Mavericks. NBA champions. He is oh, he is he is it's good. And the Mavericks have won the game. If you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day where we let it ride. Thanks for being part of the show and making Lockdown Maps your first listen today. With the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, leave a five-star review, like the video, and comment anything below. Let me know what's one thing that stood out to you in this game against the Brooklyn Nets. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, use the code LOCKDOWN for $20 off your first purchase at GameTime. Joining me, as always on the post game, the post-game prodigy, which you got for me, slightly biased. I- I'd love to hear why you think this might be a loss. Sure, I'll tell you. All right, let's hear it. I'll tell you. We'll get into that. I'll tell you why. I'm going the Ted Lasso route, and I think that sometimes you can lose and still win. Sometimes you can win and still lose, and so we'll talk about that. We'll get into some of the role players and how uh, some of them looked very tradable, and some of them looked not so tradable. (laughs) We'll talk about them a little bit, some of the the Mavs strategies in this game. We'll also talk about the rumors. Rumors. The rumors surrounding Kyle Kuzma. And if the Wizards are just going to hold on to him, do they should should they? Are they? Is it just posturing? We'll talk about that. But let's start here. Okay, Mavs win 119 to 107. Back to back wins, back to back games, back to back games that started at like 6:30 Texas time. That kind of sn- snuck up on a lot yeah. of us. <laughs> I love up. the early games though. I do. I oh, them. we're recording this at like 9:21. When does that I ever know. happen in my life? It's really nice. And so they they get the win. They had a really good first half where they were up, you know, they're up at halftime and you go, all right, I'm feeling good. 65 to 47. They're up by 22. You're like, all right, 20 point lead. Now in the, in the NBA right now, a 20 point lead is not that much anymore. Yeah. It's like a (laughs) 10 point. It's a new 10 point lead. 20 point lead can go like that. Just look at, for example, the reason why the Mavs won this game, the Mavs at the end of the third quarter led by Luca and Kyrie went on an 11 0 run in a minute 16 of game time. A minute six, you can score points like that in the NBA right now. It is insane. And so the Mavs taking the 22 point lead was not like, okay, we can put, take our foot off the gas, but that's what they did. And it seemed like they took their foot off the gas. So they go on that run to end the third quarter. You're feeling good about them. Then they're back up by 20 and kid decides let's start Luca and Kyrie in the fourth to start the fourth quarter to close it out. Right. That's, that's where I thought that decision went. He said, let's close them out. And they couldn't do it. They couldn't put him away. And the lead got cut to like six with five minutes left. And you had to play Luca and Kyrie deep into the fourth. And they ended up playing. They both ended up playing. Luca played 24 minutes. Kyrie played 21 minutes in the second half. And to me, that's why a win can sometimes be a little bit of a loss. Okay. I can see that. The lead did shrink, but they could have easily set Luca for a few minutes. They were going to lose that game. They, they cannot hold leads. I disagree. They could have had Kyrie out there and he and they would have been fine, I think. Well, Kyrie played. He played a bunch. He played. Yeah, but I'm saying you could have stacked 40 minutes, minutes in this game too. <laughs> so Luca didn't have to play 43. Do we really want Kyrie playing 40 minutes on the second night of no, a back-to-back? No, we don't want Kyrie too? playing 40, no. 40 minutes either. But I guess, I guess that's just where we are. That's what I'm saying. The that's new what Nick I'm Nurse. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying it's it's somewhat of a loss because you're playing against the Nets. They have not played that well lately. They're 17th on offense, 17th on defense. This is a team you should be able to put away. And that's they actually shocking. And they can't put them away. They're 17, 17 for the season, not like lately. But That still surprises me. I would have guessed easily 25th. <laughs> <laughs> they just look so bad sometimes. But they can't put teams away. But the reason why they actually got the win, though, Kyrie and Luka, when those two guys are 1A, 1B, and they're playing like they did, it's combined for 71 points, which is not more than Luka scored in that one game, which is wild if you think that about it like that. Luka, 18 rebounds, nine assists. What did you see from the stars in the in, the, in this two in this game, which was just the reason why they won because they led the way. Yeah, Kyrie, obviously, I felt like Kyrie played with a little uh, extra tonight going back Absolutely. to Brooklyn and feeding off the crowd a little bit, even though the crowd sounded half Mavs fans. I mean, what was going on there? Uh, never really thought the Mavs fans traveled that well. Apparently, there's a lot of like Slovenians in attendance is what um, I saw. 
I don't know that it's more about Mavs fans traveling. I think it's more just like, are there Nets fans? Okay, that's true. That's Sorry. a fair point. Sorry, Locked On Nets. Adam, Doug, apologies. <laughs> Nets, the Nets crowd is like the Rams and Chargers crowds in football. Exactly. It's like, exactly you know, what it is. It's they're like, basically playing. Oh, six, I get to see Luca and games. Kyrie, and they're both going to play tonight? Oh, yeah, yeah. Heck yeah, I'm going down. Yeah, but Kyrie being aggressive early was like really, really Huge. big. And um, for Luca, an interesting game. An interesting game from Luca where there were some frustrating shots, just not just Luca as a team, but like in the third quarter, especially and in the start of the fourth quarter, they were playing so fast, which, you know, they've, they tried to incorporate into their game. And it's something that has helped them, I think a little bit, but there were some shots like six, seven seconds in the shot clock that were just dastardly. And it's like, you could <laughs> in a bad way. <laughs> yes. You couldn't have got you like shots that you could get, especially with Luca and Kyrie on the floor shots. You can get, you know, 20 seconds into the clock. And I just thought it was kind of weird. And they kept, you know, matchup hunting uh, Nick Claxton, which was not working at all. I mean, Claxton's a defensive player of the year level guy whenever he's surrounded by good teammates. And uh, he was, I mean, he played some great defense on Luka, like some ph- phenomenal did. individual defense on Luka. And they just kept going to it. It was shocking. There is an interview that Isaac and I did with Spencer Dinwiddie, which it's ironic that Spencer Dinwiddie played in this game. But Spencer Dinwiddie did in media day two years ago, sat down across from me and Isaac, and we said, tell us something about Luca that we don't know. And Spencer did what he said. It's one of our most viral clips that we've had go around like social and stuff. He said, if you go to Luca and you say, okay, here's one player. You score 1.5, I'm making up the numbers, 1.5 points per possession against this player. And you say, you, and you say here's player B. You score 0.8 points per, 100, per, per possession against this player. So like a lot less. And Luca, Luca will decide to go at the player he scores 0.8 points per possession on every single time. And we looked him in the face and said, you're talking about Rudy Gobert and Mike Conley, aren't you? Because it was just <laughs> after that playoff run and they had just played that, that series. And he uh, did not confirm it, but he did not deny it either. <laughs> and I think it's that. Like Luca is, this is what makes Luca Luca. Those plays yeah. where he's going up against Claxton, to me, were some of the dumbest things I've seen him do. He got blocked on a fadeaway jumper. Like I mean, great, a, great defense. You got to tip your cap. But yes, but it's a, just a bad decision. Yeah, <laughs> to go to do that, and but it is what makes Luca Luca. Mm-hmm. It's it's just like the complaining to the refs. It's that's all competitiveness. It's just like the playing through injury stuff. Competitiveness as well. He played through this broken nose thing and or whatever the what did the contu- nasal cavity con- contusion? What do they call yeah. it? Like got hit in the face, and. This is what makes Luca Luca is that he's going to go at those matchups. And so you have to live with some of that stuff. And yeah. you'll sometimes get insane step back threes where he, there was a play where like Claxton and I think it was Cam Thomas were both running at him at the same time. And he could have just passed away because there's obviously two guys running at you. Yeah. But instead, he just takes the shot because that's Luca dastardly in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. He loves those. He sees the double team going, coming and he shoots over it quickly. Like, Ridiculous. And B does that too. I feel like that's what a great score especially early in games, it's like, all right, let me see what I got tonight really quickly here. Like, this double team's not here yet. Let me let me shoot over this. If I make it, I'm, I'm cooking. I'm going. If not, I'll start passing out of these. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, Lucas still had a good game. Don't get me wrong. Like, he still had a good game and hit some huge shots and, I mean, 18 rebounds or whatever 18. it was. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, he's he's a great rebounder for his size. And I, I feel like it's unfair when people try to discredit it by saying – all of them are uncontested or whatever. I mean, it's the yeah, same. Say, some of them are Westbrook rebounds, like the ones where Steve, remember the ones where Steven yeah. Adams used to just like get yeah. out of the way, like just leave. See, but I didn't even like that because I, th- I think Russ is a tremendous rebounder, or at least in his prime, was a tremendous rebounder for a guard sure. too. But it, there's some strategy to letting your point guard grab the rebound. Absolutely. Immediately you push the ball. But uh, yeah, I thought, I thought Luca played well. Just some questionable offense. And again, it wasn't just Luca. There was some Tim possessions and some other possessions, even some Kyrie possessions. Who He was red hot all night, but even some shots where you're like, all right, can like especially when the offense is struggling mightily over like a three four minute stretch, can we just settle down and get a decent look instead of just rushing the first terrible shot we can get? How many 35 18 games do you think there have been this season? I'm gonna 30, guess 35 points, 18 rebounds. This just this season, I only did this. It's either a higher number than you would think or lower. I'm gonna guess six. Five. You were right there. That, there's been six now with Luca. You nailed it. Hey, yeah, you yeah. nailed it. There's been six with Luca. Embiid probably four times. And, Embiid's uh, seventy point game. He had eighteen rebounds. Jokic had a thirty eight and nineteen. Uh, LeBron had a th- that thirty six and twenty against the Warriors in oh, that double yeah. overtime game. Uh, Jokic had a thirty six and twenty one against the Rockets, and then Giannis had a thirty five and eighteen against the Cavs. 
uh, just a couple weeks ago. So, and now Luca joins that list. So, well, it's right. just uh, former MVPs and Luca and a future MVP. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Coming up, let's talk about why the Mavericks can't hold on to some of these leads because it's kind of a problem right now. And so we'll mm. talk about that. Talk about some of the role players, and then we'll get into some of the trade stuff a little bit later on today's Hot Mavs. Today's episode brought to you by eBay Motors. eBay Motors has you covered for all kinds of parts for your car. Passion, drive, patience. It's what brings home the winning trophy. It's what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts to choose from for your number one ride or die. With eBay Motors, you are burning rubber and not cash. Don't burn rubber either. Just like be good to your tires. They're they're expensive out there. Like you just you don't want to be doing that. With all kinds of parts that you need, the prices you want, eBay Motors keeps your car alive there. E- eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to US customers. eBayMotors.com. Also, I want to tell you about prize picks. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. You can check out prize picks and see what's available for you all the time. Right now on prize picks. That's right. It's not Halloween, but on prize picks, it's demon time. You can win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 $10 into 1000 They've got demons and goblins, the newest, most exciting way to play at prize picks. Squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts. So you're going to want to check on some of those things to see what is there for you. On prize picks, all you have to do is pick more or less than a stat projection on two to six players. So you pick a couple of players for the, for, you know, for the Super Bowl. You can pick some of those, and then you can pick more or less on whatever projection they have out there. And you can just watch the winnings roll in again. Check out the, the demons and goblins. That's a new thing where you can, you can win a thousand dollars on $10. That's, that's an insane payout right there. Go to pricefix.com slash locked on MBA. Use that code locked on MBA for first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Pricefix.com slash locked on NBA. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. We appreciate each and every one of you for joining the show. Check out Josh Lloyd's Locked On Fantasy Basketball live stream during the trade deadline. He'll have you covered for all kinds of different moves that happen. Locked On Fantasy Basketball on the YouTube channel. If you're not watching that show and you like fantasy, I don't know what you're doing. You're just missing out on life. That's the GOAT right there, Josh Lloyd. All right, slightly, let's talk about this game. The Mavs lose a lead again. They go up 23, and they just kind of let them back in. If you looked at this game, like just the just the stat sheet, you'd be like, oh, comfortable win for the Mavericks, wire-to-wire win, essentially. But it, it wasn't like that. Why didn't it feel like that? Because the the Nets just got scorching hot from three at the start of the fourth quarter. They had like five made threes in the, the first four minutes of the quarter or something absolutely insane like that. But the Mavericks are one of the crazier shooting variants teams in the league. And they do it over the course of an entire game, too. It's not like a game to game. It's during the course of a game. All right, they've made their last, you know, six of the last 10 threes and then a stretch where they've made two of their last 14. And we've said it all season long. When they're making threes, their defense is like legit solid. They get back. They get set. They move around well. They fly around well. They rotate well. When when they miss threes and teams get long rebounds, whatever the case may be, uh, the defense is a monstrosity. So, I mean, it's really that simple. One of their problems I think that they have, and you you alluded to this with the amount of threes like that they are giving up, they, they have too many combinations of like, oh, you can't play those guys together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Defensively. Where you go, oh, Tim and Dwight Powell. Oh, you can't play those guys together. Defensively. Oh, like Luca, Tim, and Kyrie. Oh, he can't really play all three of those guys together. And Kid didn't close with, with Tim Hardaway again. I, yeah. Another thing I noticed, Tim played 25 minutes in this game. I uh, had 14 points, seven rebounds, but I thought <laughs> second half, he was just. Looking- this is weird. I mean, this this could be the last time we talk about Tim Hardaway Jr. I mean, it really could. Are you sad about that? It's gauge your, gauge, it let's gauge weird. the feeling. Let's take the pulse. Take the pulse. How do you feel about this? Maybe the last time we talk about I Tim think Hardaway I'd Jr. be a little sad. I mean, he's been here for a while, and he's had some nice moments. You know, I still vividly remember him hitting that three. And what game was it? Game three against the Clippers where they ended up going on to choke a 20-point lead. But he hit that three <laughs> in the first quarter to put them up 20, and he's hype, and the crowd's getting into it. Why is there always a caveat on those? Well, I mean <laughs> – there, that was the caveat. It was like, oh, my God, we're about to go up 3-0. And then we lose the series. You guys remember that. They don't need to hash it out. I think I'd be okay with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would be different, I think, with Tim. If we had somebody else where it's like, okay, Tim's like last night. All right, Tim's 0 of 6. All right, his night's over. You know, 
Tim took a terrible layup, one of the terrible shots, just a horrible layup over trying to make it over Claxton that missed badly, like four seconds into the shot clock. All right, if you had another option, it could be like, all right, Tim, your night's over after that. Like, you can't, we can't have you doing that. Shoot threes and shoot, you know, we'll, we'll live with some shots, but that's just a shot that can't happen. But uh, they just don't have another option currently. And if they end up trading them, well, I mean. Tim Hardaway, he, he, how many threes did he make tonight? He made three threes tonight, so that means he has... 924 threes total. That's fourth on, on the Mavs all-time list. Uh, Dirk has almost 2,000. Jason Terry has 1,100. Luca has 1,080. And then then Tim Hardaway Jr., fourth on the list. And Mavs three-point field goals made. I mean, I'd be sad to see him go, truthfully. Like, not sad. Not like, oh, I can't believe we made the trade. But it would just be kind of sad because he's been here for a little while. And He also holds the, a Maverick stat that may never be broken again. Oh, mysteries? Turnover percentage. Oh, in a good way. Oh, 6.2% turnover percentage. Reggie Bullock at 7%. Harrison Barnes, 7.5. Porzingis, 7.6. Like, these are guys that are not turning the ball over because they're not, get, yeah, they're not giving it to saying. anybody but the bucket. There is not a lot of passes <laughs> for turnovers to happen on. 6.2%. That, that is, is kind of crazy. That is insane. Um, but yeah, I, he didn't close with Tim again. And I thought that was a, another move that was, was a solid move. You know, you had Josh and Grant making some loud mistakes there at the end, but. They still gave you some some decent defense that you needed and to be able to switch around and not get lost and, and all that. Yeah. Uh, I thought they they d definitely needed that. No, yeah, Grant, uh, Grant played pretty good again. I, I do want to give him a shout-out. He had some some boneheaded plays and stuff, but I thought defensively he he had some moments, and same with Maxie. So. Are you doing that for the trade the trade stock? Because I did not think Grant had a great game. <laughs> I think he played fine defensively. I mean, seriously. I, I, I'm serious when I say that there's a world where the Mavs make adjustments and moves, and Grant Williams become, makes more sense on the team. And his defense becomes a lot more, you know, it's like, oh, okay, that's what they saw. That that was the vision. But felt uh, like felt like I spent all offseason trying to convince Mavs fans about Grant Williams' fit, and then he's he's he screwed me on this. Yeah, I, trust I me, me like... too. <laughs> trust me, me too. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it could be the last game. I mean, it's just really weird when you think about it. Like this could be the last game for some of these guys. That for, I mean, Grant's case, been on the team a couple of months, but like Maxie's been on the team for a while. Josh Green's been on the team for a while. I mean, it would be kind of sad, I think. I thought Josh Green did have a solid game, though. Yeah, seems seems to be fitting in in his spot. He had a couple of just really great looking like playmaking plays. Twelve points, three assists in this one. Hit a couple of corner threes. You're like, all right, you're giving us exactly what you want. Now you kind of got to ask the question. All right, if Josh is playing this well, starting next to these guys, if Exum ever does come back, I don't know, Exum's foot maybe fell off, but <laughs> if he does come back, do you start Exum or do you just like? I think we just bring Exum off the bench because no, yeah, you have to bring Exum off the bench. If only because you have to limit his minutes now. Like you can't be giving Exum twenty five plus minutes anymore because he's just. I don't think his body. I'm not. I'm not even trying to be funny. I like. I didn't. No, I know, but I can just imagine. I can just imagine Jason Kidd sitting in the corner going, "Oh yeah, bet." bet. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Exum had forty three minutes tonight. I have to apologize that you felt that he should have played less. <laughs> 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 oh man, I don't know what they do. Uh, what did you think about 48 hours? What'd you think about Dwight Powell in this game? Um, so this, this is a new segment that we're starting here. This is brought to you by the, the Toronto tourist association, uh, the Dwight Powell segment here. I thought he played pretty good. I mean, two huge points in this game and two really big rebounds that sort of shifted the tides of this game when it felt like it could have really slipped. Uh, I thought that you got to look beyond his box score, you know, plus two in a 12 point game. I mean, that really helps with the net rating could have been a 10 point game. Dwight Powell's plus two makes it a 12 point game. That that helps in the end of the season when you're looking at the net rating and stuff like that. He also had a block shot and like true, you know, defensively that that's something that you you look to Dwight Powell to give you some of those numbers and to give you a block especially and like yeah. if you want to block out the noise in your life, travel to Canada. They have s serene views all over the place, different things that you can travel to mm -hmm. and see all kinds of different places. So the Canada Tourism Board, thank you for the uh, for the support for the Dwight Powell segment and use code slightly. Anywhere in Canada. Just use it. Coming up, let's talk about Kyle Kuzma. Are the Wizards trading him? Are they not trading him? Are they holding him too close to the vest? Is this all posturing? We'll talk about that and more coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Use that code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Game Time is the place where I've gone to games. I've gone to Dallas Wings games. 
Uh, if you want to see Satu Sabli in person and yeah, hold your phone out, and maybe get a contact like Grant Williams did, you can go to a Wings game there. You can also go to theater events. I've been to a couple shows with the Game Time app. You can get them, see the view from your seat, all that. You know exactly what you're getting when you arrive. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event. And even an hour after it starts, if you're somebody that shows up late, you're like, I'm fashionably late. You don't have to buy your ticket until you are on the way there. Check it out. Flash deals, zone deals, all kinds of stuff you can check out. And uh, you can see different times. Prices will be different. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use that code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem your code Locked On L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. He play f- mate. Oh, sorry, sorry. All right, slightly. Let's talk. Let's talk about the trade rumors going around Yay. right now. You're, you're out. You're done. You're like, we're, we're. This is Tuesday night. We're not even. We're not even all the way through the week yet. It's so funny because Bleach Report hit me up. They're like, hey, can you do like a thirty minute mock trade stream for the Mavericks tomorrow? And I'm like, yay, and more. Sure. Hey, I know Let's what they pay. Tell, tell, tell them I'm interested. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you took me and Isaac's spot over there. Oh, we'll keep it hush hush. <laughs> Wait, who? Um, was, what was that Luca quote about? Who was he talking about? Is that uh, XM or Derek Jones Jr.? I couldn't remember. I think it was Dante. I think it was Dante Exum when he had that Lakers game. I think that's who it was. Yeah, hilarious quote. He had another so one tonight. Funny. I love about the, the, Kyrie's oh, dunk. This is the quote, by the way. He played f- oh, Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he had another one today about Kyrie's dunk. Another sorry. classic Luca cursing moment. Uh, oh, Luca. There are kids watching Luca. I need a recovery beer. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Kuzma, apparently, according to sources, according to Jake Fisher and others. The, uh, the, the uh, it seems unlikely at this juncture, he threw a nice Derek Harperism into his, nice. into his report, at this juncture that Dallas or Sacramento for that matter will be able to find a deal that satisfies Washington's asking price of multiple first round picks for Kuzma. Dallas could search for avenues to man- manufacture another first round selection from another team, but the Wizards appear comfortable moving forward with Kuzma on their roster. Here's the thing with Kyle Kuzma. The Wizards don't have to move him. Yeah. He's signed for a couple more years, and they're not going anywhere. So what's the point? They could just wait until the offseason. I get this from the Wizards. However, I also think it could be posturing. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm not. You shouldn't buy any, really anything you hear in the next 48 hours, it, especially like it's, it's very this true. guy. It's very this true. guy's off the this guy's off the table entirely. Those are the ones you really shouldn't believe in, unless it's like a net situation where their GM or whatever's coming out and is openly saying we're not trading the coverage because the or the Raptors. <laughs> Yeah, true. The Raptors, the Raptors they say, we're not trading this guy. Then or, or the Bulls, too. The Bulls are like, yeah, we love our team. Guess what? They mean it. And they're not trading. Well, the Bulls. <laughs> they're not lying. That's not posturing. They genuinely believe it. The Bulls were like, we want to trade Zach Levine. And then they're like, guess what? We don't want to trade Zach Levine. Didn't you just say that you wanted to yeah. trade the no, we didn't. Really. We actually love our team. It's like, you guys sure about that? Okay. Just wait till they get healthy. Wait till we yeah. get Andre Drummond back. True. Wait till Patrick Williams grows and like. Is, is well, older. they are about to beat the Timberwolves right now. Another is, horrific hey, collapse. Do you believe in miracles? So with Kyle Kuzma, though, should the Mavericks just move on from this? Should they keep trying? It seems like the Wizards are asking for two firsts. Should, how can the Mavs get another first? Could they trade Tim Hardaway for a first? Could they trade Grant Williams for a first? Doesn't seem likely on either front. No, that that sounds unlikely to me. Uh, I guess never say never. If a team that needs a shooter and has like maybe multiple picks in the upcoming draft, maybe. If they're like, eh, we don't care about this pick. This is a weak draft, whatever. We could trade the 2024 first. Like, I, like I want to say Thunder, maybe. I was thinking, I know the Sixers have multiple firsts. Could the Thunder could the Thunder and the Mavs trade Tim Hardaway for Davis Bertans and send the first back? <laughs> Tim is not, Mavs, is not a Tim is not a Thunder player. And then, no, but then the Mavs take then the Mavs take Davis and that and like that's the contract they used to go get Kuzma, and then Davis ends up back at the Wizards. I actually you, don't listen, think that that's... You guys signed him to that stupid ass deal. You got him. He's got to play it out in yeah, Washington. Yeah, you got to see that one through. <laughs> I don't even know if that's possible. I don't know. Can the Mavericks trade for Bertans? It has to be like a calendar year, right, before you can trade back. No, nah, I don't know. I was just making. The, I Maybe just in a three team trade. I, I don't know how the rules work. I just really. wanted to make the joke. <laughs> I hit up Mav CBA on, on a Twitter today. The DMs. I was like, "Hey, dude, could you just explain <laughs> to me some stuff?" And he he did, and He's he great. tried his best. He even used emojis that he really was talking <laughs> like I was a toddler. And I was like, at the fish, end, I was just it's like <laughs> fish plus this. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, oh, thanks, man. But at the end, I'm like, yeah, I got. I'm actually more confused now than I was. We should have him come on this show with a whiteboard and just like yeah. sit and try to explain the CBA. Like, all right, throw some mock trades at him. He's like, no, no, you first can't apron. Do that he one. draws a stick figure with a little apron on it. He's like, all right, yeah. first one. 
Um, but with Kyle, I mean, if they want to first, the Mavericks cannot do that. Like that's a, that's, that's they shouldn't do that either way. They shouldn't do it either way. You're out. Two firsts. No, two firsts is too much. One first with for Kuzma, I'm in and interested. So I think the, I think they're asking to them. I think that they've been asking from the Mavericks. All right, give us a Josh Green, an Omax, a Hardy, and a first. And you're like, okay, then you can kind of like piece together that that like if you squint, that is the value of two first round picks. Yeah. And so I think that it, I don't think this changes anything of where the Mavericks were. I think that like they're asking the value of two first. But then you get into the Stein report where he said the Wizards are like, we don't want a crappy first round pick. We want like a real first round pick, which the Mavericks do have. Yeah, I was about 20, to say that that 2027 first is valuable. It's a real one. Uh, and especially if you are, are betting that Luca is going to move on like that. If you're in front office that thinks that, then this is a very valuable pick that you could have. And so I, I think that we're in the same spot. And I think that it feels like a deal will go down. There's also a Twitter report from Wait, you think a Kuzma deal is going down. I think they're posturing that this is my, this is my feeling on this where anytime that a team comes out and it's like, they've been sh obviously shopping a guy for a yeah. while. And then they're like, you know, we're comfortable. We're comfortable keeping this guy. We're just going to keep him. They're just yeah. keep him over here. No, I think they're that's it. Yeah. I, I agree though. If you, if you hear people like a guy's off the market, I wouldn't believe those reports. You're doing uh, that much to try. Like you're, you're listening to every, we're listening to all offers. And then they're like, no, nah, we don't want to do it, but it is Washington. Yeah. So it is different. And like you said earlier, they don't have to trade him. I mean, he's no. he's they just he just signed a contract that's pretty team friendly. I mean, it's not breaking the bank. It's not like Jeremy Grant's money. I think it's in the twenties, which I think is more than fair for a guy like Kuzma. And uh, yeah, if they, they want to hold out, they could definitely like that, that's not a stupid move on their part. There are other teams across the, like the Bulls who we're talking about. Them holding on to Caruso makes no sense for me. Just blow mm -hmm. up your team, blow yeah. it up. I know it sucks. I know it's not a fun process. It's actually hurting your team to not do it, that. Yeah, it, it, it is. You are you are hurting the future of your team by not just blowing this thing up and, and moving forward. But uh, you know, I'm not like the Mavericks would go after Caruso. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just yeah. using him as an example. But Drummond, Drummond, yeah. But Drummond, they, they could go after, especially with Drummond. He's only signed for this year. Like you could right. get something for Drummond. Like why? I don't understand why they wouldn't do that. Which it, maybe they maybe they still will. Drummond would have an interesting market too because his contract fits into like almost every, oh, any three team's million, trade three exception. Million. That's it. Yeah, so there's his market would be a little bit more robust where you, you so most teams wouldn't even have to match contracts. They could just send seconds or something. I got sent this this tweet a lot today. Uh, Brett Siegel from Clutch Points tweeted out that the Mavericks are uh, it appears likely the Mavericks are going to make a deal for PJ Washington before the deadline. Uh, that's not something that I would trust at this point. I, we no. Isaac and I have talked about for years. There's only a certain number of people you trust with Mavericks info. Like there's a, there's an inner circle, and it. He's not in there yet. Sorry, no. Sorry, man. Just sorry, learned about you today. Sorry, that means you. That means you're not in the circle. Maybe someday. Maybe, maybe he's, he's in the Hornet circle. If he's right, if he's right, good for it. Like great. But, but it's how, not some, that's something I would bet on and be like, oh, the Mavericks had a deal. Why did like and then get yeah. mad at it when it doesn't happen? Right? Please like, don't do that. Can't please, do that. please don't do that. I want. I'm, I want to. This will be the last time I want here until the trade deadline. Please, guys, don't. This happens to every fan base, so it's not just Mavs fans, where you make up fake trades in your brain, and then when they don't happen, you're like, oh, this front office sucks. They could have gotten this player. <laughs> yeah, they could have done it. They could have got Drummond. It's like, well, we don't know. Well, Mavs fans do that in free agency, too. Oh, True. we could have signed it. The guy didn't change teams. <laughs> yeah, there are 29 other teams. You know, Dallas is a great city, but there's better ones. Trust me, I've been to them. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you have a prediction since you're not going to be on until after the trade deadline? <sighs> They're going to make a move. I'm just not sure what. PJ Washington has gone from, I didn't really see it, to, okay. And, and not saying like, I'm not saying like I would like it. I'm saying like what I think they would do. PJ Washington is surging to the forefront just because there's so much smoke there. But the Mavericks do move in silence. They, that's why like the Bobby Portis, Grant Williams rumors, I was like, that, that just screams cool. Dallas Mavericks. And because like and, and cause it's over, like because the talks were basically done. Like when we yeah. learned about it, the talks were done because the right. Bucks, had, Bucks had already said no, basically. So they're like, oh, OK. But if that's that trade like happened, ongoing thing. we'd all be like, yeah, that's that's how the Dallas Mavericks move right there. Like a trade nobody ever thought could ev even happen. And it does. And again, that's, I'm standing on business. I wouldn't really like that trade. That's probably what I'll do tomorrow is like trades that no one saw coming. And I'll just start, I'll just start throwing them out. Yeah. I mean, that's what you got to look at. I'm just I'm not I don't know if this is a. Uh, trade for Kyrie year, even though there's not a Kyrie on the market, or um, that we know of at least, or a trade for JJ Redick and Nicola Melli year. I guess we're, <laughs> we're about to find out. But they'll do something, I think. I thought that was a good trade. I think there's just, I think it's going to be a board. I think the story, 
I don't. I honestly can't remember. Like I can't even oh, remember shoot, my initial veteran thoughts. leadership. Oh, if Nicola Melli can be fifty percent of what Dobbs is. I definitely talked myself into that. But uh, we'll see. Uh, I just think that it's a perfect storm for the deadline being boring because we've the big names have already been traded. Already gone. That and how many sellers are there really? Like, is there even a single motivated seller? The one, the one thing about this trade deadline though is it's the first one before the second apron rules really kick in for some of those teams. Right, like Phoenix and has to make a move. Phoenix has to. The Warriors are kind of stuck if they don't do anything. True. And so, like you got, you got those teams have become like, like the the Warriors teams have become like the sellers in a weird yeah, way. Yeah. True. Wiggins is still a possibility. I've moved more towards PJ Washington because there's so much smoke there. Stein reported today that the, the, the Mavs interest in Andrew Wiggins has been overstated. I was like, oh, if Stein is saying that, then it then that's it's gone. True. It could it could still be posturing. I mean, sure. And there could be a deal that wasn't on the table. You know. T- 30 minutes before the deadline that pops up two minutes before the deadline. And they're like, all right, let's do it. Deandre Ayton to the Mavericks. Like, Oh my God. <laughs> oh, he's back. Reunited. Ayton and Luca are good friends though. Uh, Deandre seems like good friends with everybody to be fair. They probably play duos all the time. To get, to get True. <laughs> online. They probably are jumping into what even is the new Warzone map. That game's terrible. Uh, Jonas Valanciunas is one that I'd be interested in. Oh, that's your, that's your, oh, I, you know what? That's, that's a great, that's a great random, thought exercise. Random out of, random out of nowhere. Like, all right, the Mavs just got this guy. Go through each roster and be like, oh, I, I could see that being like a, whoa, who? Tim for, Tim for Jonas Valanciunas. Like what? That doesn't make any, they have Jordan Hawkins. <laughs> they have CJ McCall. What the, like, and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, that's uh, what it is. I mean, that would be really hilarious. <laughs> Would be a Mavs thing to do. Yeah. Let us know. Let us know in the comment section what's a trade you think will happen. Let us know what's one thing that stood out to you in this game. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, I'll probably post a little bit earlier tomorrow just because we'll get all the trade stuff and I'll have a bunch of trade ideas. And then we'll obviously have a trade deadline show here and we'll do the Mavs Knicks game. Like half of the Knicks are out, so the Mavs have a better chance of winning that game. Feeling feeling good about that one. <laughs> feeling better. And uh, and I just jinxed them completely. And then, <laughs> and then uh, slightly we'll be back for that, guys. Thanks for listening to Locked On Mavs. Peace out. Boom.